Hi guys, putting corrosion into terms that your customers can easily understand can often make or break a program and perhaps save a controllable loss from occurring. So I want to share a trick I learned from a New Jersey electrician that puts corrosion into easily understandable terms and uh, can help demonstrate some of the problems that we see in almost every treatment uh, system that we treat. Dissimilar metals in the presence of electrolyte like cooling tower water, closed loop water, allow electricity to flow between the two and that results in corrosion and the further those metals are on the nobility table the more severe that uh, current is and the more severe the, con the corrosion is. We have technical bullets to describe that we can talk about it till we're blue in the face but often seeing it firsthand makes a real impression and this trick is a real winner. Uh, it's got things that that you normally have around you. First of all, we've all got meters. This one will read in millivolts, so that's an advantage. You want to read DC voltage. Uh, we've got uh, six cents. You need a nickel and a penny. You need something that's not conductive to hold them together. Your fingers might work, but um, but you got to work your fingers and the sensors. It helps if you have a clamp or something. Maybe a rubber band would work. Um, some salt isn't part of it. I'm going to show that. And uh, this is water straight out of the tap. Uh, it helps to have a wide mouth. Uh, thing a coffee cup would work just fine whatever the customers got in their office basically what we're going to do on oh, a, a piece of paper uh, in this case the paper who oh, the paper is the insulator so this is just copier paper we cut it up and uh, make notes on it instead of use uh, post-it notes but I'm going to tear out a little piece roughly the size of the the nickel I'm going to put the nickel on one side I'm going to put the penny on the other side I'm going to clamp those two together with my clamp, right? So now I've got dissimilar metals and I've got sort of a dielectric union in there. True? Uh, to show that this works, I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to keep an eye on the display here. I'm going to show that we're flowing no voltage, right? We're flowing no voltage when I touch those two, okay? So next, we're going to add the water to the coffee cup and we're going to soak the paper right so now we've got a layer of slime we got something that is semi permeable the paper is not the dielectric union the paper is not the plastic boundary the paper uh, is a, uh, a semi permeable membrane and now we're going to see how much current flows between the two Lo and behold, we got half a volt. And to prove to you that this is real voltage, not something fictitious, notice how it's positive 0.5253 volts now. If I put those on the other side, we're going to see negative voltage. Same voltage negative because I've reversed the polarity of the battery. If you want to demonstrate the impact of higher conductivity, you got to really bump this up. So we're going to add some conductivity to the water. Columbus City water conductivity is, oh, 300 or so. We're going to bump that up by adding a little bit of salt to it. I'm going to guess now that we're in the couple thousand range after I carefully dissolve all the salt. And we're going to look at the voltage that it produces again. Notice how the voltage goes up. Now we've got 0.59 volts, 5.8 volts. The higher that gets, the more voltage the penny and the nickel uh, experiment here from the New Jersey electrician conducts and the more severe the corrosion gets. You can do this in anybody's office. Uh, it's a great demonstration. Again, you got all the tools in either the pocket or your truck or your service kit or your trunk or your car. Uh, go out and have a ball. Thanks, fellas. If you got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.